But yeah, like a, a, a more popular anime or a more popular character it pays the same as like Farmer 7, who says two lines. Just the amount of time it takes you to track it. Uh -huh. uh, red. Um, my dream job for voice acting and voice directing for anime it would be the chance to either work on a Satoshi Kon project or a Miyazaki project. Um, I think that'd be pretty much the, the pinnacle of like something that I have a lot of respect for that I think would be awesome. As far as just voice acting something in general, um, I would love to be on a stupidly popular superhero show as the main superhero. Or if it's like X Men, one of the cooler mutants or something. Like I think that'd be fun and awesome. Um, or to be able to be part of a completely original property that has nothing to do with anything that's ever happened before. That it's its own new thing. That would be fun too. I, I would love to be a My Little Pony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the friendship is magical. Never happened. Um, but uh, either that or a Disney animated feature, a Pixar yeah. animated feature. Yeah. 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 Even if it's just a little side, little like thing that just kind of goes. Mm. Yes. Score. Pixar. I'd be all over that. I'd be all over you. I had the best. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, back row. Nope. You turned around. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's back row for me from here. I can't see it. Right, I have two questions. I have two answers. <laughs> Works out well. Right, the first question is, um, what is your favorite character in anime, just out of all the characters in the office? Um, my favorite character in FMA. For the first series, believe it or not, my favorite character was Envy. Not because of anything that happened, uh, like as far as like it being a good guy or bad guy. I just thought that Envy had like one of the most tragic, horrific kind of storylines, and I re I really liked that character. And as far as like the amount of um, uh, catharsis and awful stuff that happens to Envy, um, I think as far as like the most endearing character, I think Alphonse is probably the the most endearing, sweet, good character. Um, for Brotherhood, as far as new characters, characters that weren't in the first series, um, I don't know. I like Olivier a lot. I think Olivier Armstrong is pretty awesome. So. Tough chicks rule. <laughs> I, I actually haven't watched it, all of the episodes of either, but I know that I know enough to be like, oh, that's Ed. This well, short. Well, maybe, maybe you get to participate in her second question, because she said she had two. Oh, okay. Um, the first year of voice acting jobs that I had were more like voiceover jobs. I worked for, um, I would do commercial stuff, like I was the spokesperson for New Newcastle Beer for like six months and did all of their commercials. Or I would just be random guy in some random commercial for stuff that I don't even remember. Um, the first character work that I did, I think, was um, radio stuff. I helped out, um, no, I think the anime stuff was first. It was all around the same time, but I also did like bits. Um, there was a country radio station that was maybe five minutes from my house, and they would do little character bits for their nighttime programming. They wouldn't have any DJs come in. They would just have all these pre-recorded little skit setups that would lead into songs, and so I would get to play a bunch of people doing that. And they would play those at nighttime, and that was fun. Um, well, when I started doing, uh, I, I wasn't an anime. Uh, I, I never... I, I did animation and I just kind of got dragged in because the producer was like, wow, you have an annoying voice. Aww. Aww. My voice is so annoying. But, but he said that my voice would be perfect for anime. So, uh, so that's All of them are annoying. <laughs> pretty much he thought that. He is like the most obnoxious producer that you will ever meet. I love him to bits and pieces. Um, he's super antisocial, um, but uh, he, he's like very much like a South Park character. Um, but yeah, he, he thought I was annoying, and so he dragged me into a, a voice recording audition, and that, that's how I got in. But uh, yeah, 
joy to the world. Happy joy, joy. Yeah. You pick the big one. Hello, over there. Come on. Um, in your, do you have to auction or, or audition? I'm sorry for every part, or are you well known enough to that they go, oh, let's just call him up, or how does it work that you get your parts? It really just depends on the project. Uh, most of the time for any series of any length, like anything that's longer than like 11, 12 episodes, uh, it's an audition. Um, I just auditioned for uh, a couple of different series at, at Funimation, and I've been working with them longer than I've been working with any uh, animation company. I've been with them for like 14, 15 years, something like that. Um, but I still have to go in and audition just, you know, there could even be a brand new guy that's never done it before, right before, right after me. It's just the way that it works out. Um, there are some projects that I'll just get called in on. Like, I just did some uh, video game work, and um, they had worked with me before. I didn't get to audition for this game at all, but they said, hey, we thought of you for this part. Um, we think you'd be great. Could you come in and track it for us? Do you have, a, like, an agent that helps? I have a talent agent. For a lot of my voice stuff, though, um, I got it. Um, I had a reputation for voice work um, that had nothing to necessarily to do with my agent. My agent got me a lot of commercial work and a lot of industrials, like the Canon XL17 camera does blah, 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 blah. You should buy one. Um, but all the kooky animated stuff I got on my own. So um, it's 95% of the time someone will contact me directly like, hey, we're tracking this video game in California. Can you give us four days to come out and do this part for us? I'm like, yes. Um, uh, for some local Dallas stuff, even with the voice work sometimes, they'll go through my agent. They'll say, hey, we'd like to mic on this, you know, and go through all the proper channels and stuff. But sometimes they just contact me directly. It really just depends. Yeah, a, a lot of times, it's, yeah, it's, it's audition. Um, back in the day when ABV had an Austin branch, you know, um, the directors would call and be like, sure, man, we have a part for you. Get your happy butt over here. Um, so a lot of times I didn't know what character or what show it was, and then I'd be like, whoa, she's awesome. You know, um, but nowadays I do a lot of auditions where it's like I'll get a call and um, a or a director or casting um, company would be like, hey, yes, we have got this like video game. It's an MMO. Uh, we need you to, to look over the, this uh, these sides and, and send us a, a wave file. And so um, then I'll, I'll open the an email and there'll be a description of the character. And then uh, biography, you know, background, story, all, all kinds of stuff about this character in a picture. And then sometimes there might be links. Um, I get a lot of YouTube links where it'll be like, yes, so we need you to watch this on this YouTube. And because the character is going to be kind of like this. Um, and then there'll be like four or five lines. And then I would sit there on my computer, record those, and send them out. And then uh, if they like it, then they'll call me back and be like, yes, we need you to come in and read these other lines. And, and so that, that's how I do a lot more auditions lately. I actually did an audition like on Tuesday um, that way. And um, I, I have to go in on Monday. No, no, Wednesday. I have to go in on Wednesday and, and go in for another uh, a face-to-face -face audition. So. A callback, is it? Yeah, it's a callback. That means I'm going to pass the first round. Yeah. <laughs> Not rejected yet. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a very thick skin because, um, you know, for every, like, 50 auditions, I might get a callback, like, twice. So it works out with everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over there. Yep. What I normally do is, um, for anime, I will, uh, they'll give me a preview of each line, uh, they'll show it to me in Japanese, and I'll have the script right beside me where I kind of eyeball back and forth, forth of, um, okay, the, okay the, there's a pause there, okay, okay they're, ah, they're huge at the end, so I have to build up and get bigger as it goes along. Um, if the line is short, I will memorize it real quick, and then I'll just concentrate on the picture. If it's a bunch of pair, you know, a bunch of paragraphs. If it's a bunch of sentences making up a paragraph. I'll just have to go back and forth 
you know, and uh, not memorize it. But I can uh, do a better delivery that way by not wondering or having to remember what it is that I'm trying to say next and get the wording mixed up. So if it's short, I memorize it, and if not, uh, if it's longer, then I don't. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I, I, you know, it's like it's all mostly cold reads for me, so I don't get the practice nine. Uh, they, they just kind of say, okay, read it. It's like, okay. Yeah. Don't, don't get yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's like basically, if I if I read it well, I can tell because they'll just be like, okay, uh, turn to page forty-two, like, and then I'll read it. And if I do it wrong, yeah, do it again, but this time a little less sucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, if I do it right, then then you can just be like, you're exceeded our uh, our suck threshold. Couldn't handle any more. We're gonna need you to go back and do that again and pull back the amount of suck on your end. I'll preface this with, I went through a period of many, many years of without watching any television at all because I was far too busy uh, producing and directing and stuff like that. I missed out on Lost, I missed out on Heroes, I missed out on a bunch of stuff. The last new shows that I watched were like Deadwood and Six Feet Under when they were still airing the first time around. So from there until about six months ago, I didn't watch any new television. Uh, I now watch The Walking Dead, which is pretty awesome. I like season one more than season two, though. Um, and I watch Game of Thrones, which is sweet. And there's naked people in it. And um, um, I, I, I've recently started watching Hell on Wheels just because it's conveniently located next to Walking Dead, and it seems to be pretty good so far. But yes, I watch The Walking Dead, and I think it's awesome. Did you see the recent episode of season two? I saw all of season two that has aired so far. So I guess then yes. <laughs> oh, spoiler. Yeah, yeah. It's like no. Rick, Rick had to had to make yeah, a tough yeah. choice. Yeah. No spoiler. No spoiler. Um, but yes, that wasn't something I saw coming. So. Um. Yeah. As, as far as uh, hey, the question was shows that. The question was, you watch The Walking Dead? Yeah. <laughs> I watch The Walking Dead religiously. Yeah. I, I have like every comic from The Walking Dead. I even watch the webisodes. Bring hither your ring. Huh? Your ring? Do you have a ring, Andy? <laughs> hey, are you under or over 18? She's <laughs> 16. <laughs> and what is your name? Kinley? Okay, let's see. Um, can we? <laughs> this is kind of awkward for me because we just met, but um, I'm uh, tired of being alone and my Haruhi is leaving me to go be with silly boys. And I was wondering if you would like to spend the rest of your life with me. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've made me a very happy mom, Dad. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, guys. We really appreciate it. We'll see you around. Would you mind doing a Master Russian impersonation? Sure. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Goku Krillin, give me a date! <laughs> now! Thank you.